I'm Susan and today I'd like to show you how to make my spotted flower. It's actually not a really difficult cane but it gives a really cool look and it'll change up all your flower petals and you can make pods and all sorts of other little decorative items using this same cane. So let's get started. So I'm starting out with these colors. I'm using two of the purple, four of the blue, and three of the green. And I'm not starting out with the normal triangle that I did in my last video because there's lots of ways to make a Skinner blend and that was the easiest way to show you with a single package and starting with a square. This is the teardrop method and the teardrop method doesn't always give you as nice of a blend. Sometimes you have to fiddle with it but I'm going to show you if we have a problem how you fiddle with it. It's pretty simple. Now even with the other Skinner blend you can have blends that you just don't like the color combinations you picked. You can still switch them around. You can add more white, you can add more yellow, you can add more of a certain color if you don't find it heavy enough. And that's just part of polymer clay. So things are not always the same tone amount. Like this was mixed with a little bit of cl translucent clay so it may not be as strong as the purple. And your color um, blends don't always come out as even with polymer clay as they do with paint. So it takes a little bit more play, but don't let that upset you. Just keep going on and if you find that maybe these colors are too dark, we'll add some white to them. There's other ways to alter your colors. Don't get upset if you're not loving it. Now I'm just going to take a roller and roll this out and the reason I'm rolling this out is it'll go through the pasta machine easier. Now you can continue to roll it so that you could fold it over when you put it in the pasta machine. But either way, I'm just going to put this through my pasta machine on a number one, which is my thickest setting. Now most pasta machines have a way of pushing the clay over to one side a little bit higher. Sometimes it'll be the right, sometimes it'll be the left. Every machine's a little different. So if you find that it's getting larger and more stretched out on one side, just flip it over next time you put it in. It doesn't matter, you can flip it over, put it in twice, get it to even out that way. So I'm just going to fold this and run it through my pasta machine about 15 times of running it through and folding it and I'll come back with that beautiful blend. So I'm back with my beautiful blend and if you didn't like this, maybe you thought it was too dark, you wanted a lighter shade, you could take a strip of white, put it on top of here and re-blend this and get this a lighter shade. So don't feel like, oh no, what did I do? If you felt that you needed more green or more yellow, you could add a piece of yellow here, a piece of red here. Whatever it is that you want to switch around, you are not married to this. This is only the final say if you like this. I happen to like this. Now another trick I use is I have a six inch opening on my machine and this is not as much clay as I usually use. So I put a little magnet and I have several of these hematite magnets. They were from my kids when they were younger, but you can use any kind of magnets, refrigerator magnets. You can cover these with clay if you want, whatever it is to make that opening smaller so that I don't have this extra part of the machine and it starts to leach over and become this long kind of wonky piece, it's easier to just use magnets. Now you can buy these from some companies, they sell them, but these are basic magnets you can get anywhere. If you have refrigerator magnets you don't use anymore, that'll do the same thing. So to take my clay, just as I do with the brush stroke flower cane video, I am just going to fold it over on itself. And I am going to run this through the pasta machine on my thickest setting longwise. So it'll go in this way and come out in a long strip. And then I'm going to put it on a number three so I get it a little thinner. So I will come back with that. And I'm back with my long piece and all I'm going to do is fan fold this. Just an accordion fold back and forth. There does not have to be a particular width or size whatever you feel comfortable with. All we are doing is manipulating the colors so rather than going side by side like they did here, they'll be more like stripes that slowly graduate from one color to another. And it's just a different way of manipulating the clay. So when you want it to change its form, you can fan fold it, you can spiral fold it, you can do it all different ways depending on how you want that color to change. And you can see you'll get it just to go into a block now where some people call this a plug. A plug is just a block of clay that I'm not sure why they call it a plug, but 
some people want to know the terms and I don't know half the terms for clay. <laughs> All I can tell you is that most of the terms for clay are named after people who discovered them and so that's why it's confusing on what a Skinner blend is. A Skinner was designed by Judith Skinner and so it's called a Skinner blend and all it means is going from one shade to another with the clay. Now I am trying to get this into a long skinny piece. So squishing it on itself, I like to get those rough edges in and I'm just going to pull on it and push it so I can get it into a nice long piece because that is what is going to create that brush stroke kind of a look in our clay. So it will look like it's been painted by hand rather than just stacked clay, which is really all it is. Now I'm just kind of pulling this out because I want a long skinny strip. And if you've seen me do this flower before, you know exactly where I'm going. But in case you haven't, I like to show you. Now I'm just going to run this through on a number one on the pasta machine. Remember before you go back to your pasta machine, change it back to number one. If you run out it through number three by accident, just stack it on itself three times and run it through again. So I'm back, I've got my clay run through the pasta machine and I have an extruder. Now you could do this without an extruder, it just takes you longer. If you happen to have an extruder, this is a whole lot easier. I got this one off of eBay. Um, I bought it in the fondant section. It was just a few dollars. It works exactly the same as the one I got from the clay company. If you have the one from the clay company, that'll do the same. They have two different discs. I am using the larger disc, just so that you know. Um, but if, like I said, if you don't have one of these, you could just roll this out really fine. I just don't see the point in spending the time since I do have one. And all I'm going to do is extrude this and come right back because that's kind of boring to watch. So I'm back and I've extruded all my pieces and now I'm just going to cut my long strip into sections. Now you could measure this out to get the exact length that you could get the most sections if that makes you happy, but we all know I just do whatever is the easiest and since you're watching, you don't want to watch me measure this out. Besides, I love having extra clay. So I'm just making all my pieces the same length so that I can stack these sections. And it's very simple to do this. Just follow from one to the other. Don't throw this extra piece of clay out because you know we can make beautiful stuff. I've got lots of other videos. Now I'm just going to take my piece of clay and I'm going to take my little strands. And I'm just going to put my strand, let me make sure I have an overhang on both ends. And I know it doesn't really make a whole, whoops, stuck to my finger. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense while I would leave this overhang until you see me do this once and then you'll understand completely. So I'm putting two strands there and I'm just using my fingernail to break it. It's really delicate. Now I like to stack my pieces offset. So there's about a quarter of an inch between here and here. And I like to do them back and forth and that's what gives the brush stroke effect. Now I want to add another spot because these are going to be our little dots in the middle. And because I left that overhang I know exactly where to put that. And I'm going to take my other piece and alternate it so that it comes forward a quarter of an inch and leaves a quarter of an inch in the back. And I'm then going to add my two pieces and I'm just going to continue altering this and that's how I get my little dots in the cane. Now if you wanted them just in one part you could just put the spots in one part. If you want more of them you can just add more. It doesn't matter. This is your fantasy and it's what you like. I'm just showing you how I get there. And so I'm just putting that one in there. Now I do find when I put colors in these they have a tendency to disappear, so it has to be very contrasty because you will be amazed how small these dots get once I start to reduce this. And you may find that it's better to just roll the clay out by yourself and not even use the extruder. So it's personal which one works better for you. Now I'm just going to cut this in half. 
and I want to put one last dot in the middle here. And then stack this. And that is how I get my little spots in the middle. And if I take these little ends off, like I said, they were just really easy to see which one you were on. And now I'm just going to start to compress it on the ends because that's just an easier way to get all those air pockets out. And now we can just cover our petal and make the flower. So wrapping my cane, I'm basically just using um, a couple colors of clay on the number one on a pasta machine, which is my thickest setting. And I'm just cutting it to make a marker on the end. Now, a lot of people don't understand if you've never seen me do a flower cane before what a registration mark is. It's because when you make it into a petal shape like this, you can't tell which is top and which is bottom if you have it all covered just in the same clay. But if you have a registration mark where you can see I have that point, you know exactly where to pinch. And so you always want to do it with a contrasting color so that you can see because what's going on inside the cane you will not be able to see when you are reducing. You are covering this with another color so you will lose complete sight of where this green is and where the pur purple is so you won't know which end to pinch. And that's just an easy way to keep things straightened out for you. Now if you press the clay to itself you'll get a little registration mark which whoops I cut the wrong one. Um, we'll just show you where to cut. Now see I cut the wrong one there? Not an issue. Just cut the next one over and it fits right in there perfectly. I like to see that you see I make mistakes so when you make them it's not a big deal. Just keep going. It doesn't matter. It won't affect the outcome. And that's really all that matters. So I'm just trimming the end and I just have my cane wrapped like this. I have to move that out or it'll keep focus on, on that. Now all I'm going to do to reduce is you see I've got the folds in this direction. I want to go and squeeze the air out between those folds. That's the first place I want to get. So I get rid of all those air pockets because the air pockets are not our friend. They are the problem that you will find little gaps in your canes and if you wonder what that gap is it's an air pocket and it'll look like a black or a dark line. Now you can kind of stroke them out with your finger or a pencil eraser or a clay blender, but if you can avoid them to start with, that's really your best bet. So I'm just trying to reduce this down to at least the size of a roll of quarters before I roll it on the table. Because if you don't get all that air out, the clay inside will distort and it'll move around quite a bit. Now I've got it small enough I can roll it on the table with some minimal pressure and it'll start to reduce a little bit more. Now some people don't like cutting this, these ends off. I like to cut them off because these are fantastic for making lentil beads, lentil leaves, um, Natasha's, folded focals, all sorts of different types of beads. I love to make with those ends, so whatever you do, don't throw them away. They're very precious to me. Now, I'm trying to make this into the shape of a triangle. And you could wait until you got it smaller, you could use it larger, whatever size suits you best. This really depends on the strength in your fingers. It takes a lot of strength to squish this down. Polymer clay can be very thick and strong. And the more you do this, the more you'll develop some strength for sure. And I am just pushing down the different corners until I get a beautiful teardrop shape, which I can use as my flower petal. Now I can also use this on canes for pods. If I want to make those pods, I have a separate video on that. In fact, you may want to go through all of my videos if you're new to my channel because you'll find so many things you can do with these flowers or even just petal canes that you may be a little bit overwhelmed to start with, but trust me, your creativity will just start to explode. Now, all I'm going to do is cut the end off here, 
and I'm cutting right where this clay stops. You can, I want you to see this a little closer. See where that clay is still not blended there? That is where the cane really starts. And before that is just a messy spot, so you want to put that in your little dish for later. And I am just going to cut five petals. You can cut six petals, ten petals, whatever makes you happy. I'm making them all equal. You could measure this out, but I do like to have extra cane left so that I can create pods and other things. And this is just a little bigger on this side, so let me reduce this down. But you can do so many things with just one of these canes. You will be amazed. You can decorate so many things. You don't want to use them all up on flowers because then you won't have any other matching pieces. And I only need one more, so let me just measure that, which would be about there. Now, for the center of my flower, I start out with just a bullseye cane. And the bullseye cane, I then reduce down to this. And I have had a lot of questions of how do I do that. Very simple. I just take it and reduce it down. And this does not matter if you roll it on the table once you get some of that air pocket out. So I roll it out. I cut it in half. And I cut it in half again. And put it back together. And now I reduce it one more time. And so as I reduce it down once again, I can roll this on the table. I don't mind if this distorts. It gets so small that nobody would really see if it distorted or not. So it's not really worth your time to spend too much time on this. And once again, I like to cut these ends off because they really just distort your canes. Cut it in half, cut it in half again. There you go. And now you reduce this down and that becomes this. This is the exact same thing. This is just the smaller version so it looks a lot more complicated. And all I'm going to do is roll this out a little bit smaller so that we can put it in our flower. Now, sometimes these points can get in the way, so I just like to take my finger and just push them down. It'll make just enough room for this flower center to fit in perfectly. And I just need a little piece here, so we'll just get it there. Now the flower center has a tendency to reduce the least, and the petals will reduce the most on the edges. The outside of your, your cane will reduce more than the inside. So I always do my center just a little bit smaller than I really want it. Now, of course, this does not fit perfectly. Not an issue. Just push it in a little bit. See? There we go. Now I flip my cane over and on the other side it doesn't match. Well, this is where you've got to just line things up and push them in and make sure it all matches before you reduce it. Otherwise that petal will stay in that odd position. So just pull it out and make sure it's lined up on both sides. Because once this clay starts to reduce, you can't move that. So there we go. We have it perfect on that side. And perfect on that side. And now all I do is reduce. And I will put a little gold leaf around this because that is my most favorite thing to do. And switch it up and I will come back with some show and tell and show you the beautiful things we make with this cane. And my favorite part, show and tell, to show you what we got out of these canes. And I got these beautiful pod beads and these crystal pods and these wonderful little flowers and marguerite flowers and these 
great large focal flowers. If you want to make any of these other beads, I do have separate tutorials if you just go up and look in my videos. I also created this using some yellow and orange with just this little titch of like a burgundy red. And I mixed a little glitter in this and it gave just such a beautiful look. And I got these kind of tiger lily looking flowers. I really, really like these with the black spots in them. And I also made them using some deep purple, purple, some pink that I added some pearl to, and some deep blue. And I outlined it with this really pretty lavender. And with the rhinestone ones, you really see how beautiful they are. Just giving you a whole different look with these little white spots. Now, this was some pink ones that I did, and I only put the black spots halfway down. I didn't want them all the way through the flower. I wanted them just on the edge of the flower. So it didn't have too much of a spotty look, just to switch things up. And they came out really pretty with this white base with pink and a little bit of purple with a pale pink outline. Now I have experimented using colors with these and I have had very little success. I find the colors have a tendency to disappear. In this one I used yellow and you can't even tell that there's a yellow dot in any of these anywhere. It just kind of baked clear. So I still have beautiful flowers. I still have beautiful beads. I'm not unhappy about that, but I do like to warn you, stick with the black or white. I was most successful with that. I did another one where I used some green and it disappeared just like that. So I didn't even bother to make the flowers out of it yet to show you. But you can have lots of fun with this cane and create lots of cool things. So I hope you enjoyed that and have lots of fun playing with clay. Thanks for watching.